The State of Crypto is presented by Tron, connecting the world to the power of cryptocurrency. All right, some breaking news coming in, uh, new developments in the FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried's defense strategy. Joining us now to discuss this is Coindesk Global Policy and Regulation Managing Editor, Nick Day, who is also editor of Coindesk State of Crypto Newsletter. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. All right, so SPF, his lawyers, somebody has sent a letter. What does it say? Yeah, so this is from this morning. The FTX, uh, sorry, the Sam Bankman Free defense team has filed a letter saying that, uh, you know, as part of their defense, they plan to introduce an advice of counsel argument, basically saying that Sam Bankman Free believed he was acting in, quote, good faith uh, when he was doing various things with FTX, including setting signal messages and other systems to auto delete, uh, loaning funds to Alameda and FTX executives, and setting up North American entities like North Dimension. Uh, basically, saying that he was doing all of this after or on the belief that lawyers from both Fenwick and West, an external law firm, as well as in-house counsel, had reviewed these decisions and, uh, you know, basically implying that they had signed off on it, saying that, you know, he was not doing it out of his own volition. He was doing it, you know, with the understanding that his lawyers told him it was fine. Sorry, Nick, what's not clear so far, and perhaps you can add some clarity on this, is has he named the firm? Has he named in council, inside council or outside council? Yeah. yeah, so the the law firm is Fenwick and West. Um, this is the same law firm that the defense team previously tried to get more information from, but was blocked by uh, the judge overseeing the case, as well as, you know, prosecutors had objected to it. Um, so not a new name. We've seen their name pop up tied to FTX before. Uh, this seemed to, yeah, you know, I think one way of them kind of reading this is, you can say that Bankman Fried's defense team intends to blame Fenwick and West for at least some of the decisions or some of the process that led to this, uh, the decisions mm -hmm. that he's now on trial for. Uh, he's also naming in house counsel like Dan Friedberg and Ryan Miller, as well as a couple others. Um, you know, we have not had a chance to reach out to most of these individuals yet. We did send a, you know, uh, request for comment to Fenwick and West. It's, they have not responded yet, although I believe they're on the West Coast, so it's very possible they're not even awake yet. Um, but yeah, this is a. Uh, it's in kind of we've seen this kind of implied before, but now we have firm confirmation that that is one of the strategies the defense team intends to pursue. Nick, you were in the courtroom yesterday. You were also there when Sam Bankman Fried had his bail revoked. At that time, you described his parents as being very emotional, it being a very charged uh, courtroom. What was it like yesterday when you were there? Paint a picture for us. Yeah, so uh, yesterday was a, you know, relatively, I'd say, a very low-key affair. Um, you didn't have uh, as many people in the courtroom as you normally do. Normally, the courtroom is packed. You only had a handful of people yesterday. Uh, Sam Bankman-Fried's mother was present. His father was not. Um, Bankman-Fried himself, uh, you know, he was escorted in a little bit after, uh, you know, 9 a.m. when everyone was already seated, uh, wearing a, you know, what appeared to be a prison you know, uniform, prison, not a jumpsuit exactly, but, uh, you know, uh, just beach clothes instead of his usual suit. Uh, it looked like his legs were still shackled, you know, the chain that uh, lets him walk, but prevents him from running. Uh, he appeared to, you know, be that, uh, or have those on his legs. Um, and yeah, he quickly smiled at his mother, walked to the bench, and then didn't look back to the rest of the, the hearing itself. All right, uh, just switching gears, uh, Nate Chastian, uh, the former head of product at OpenSea, he was sentenced to three months of prison time. Uh, this is an insider trading case. Could you tell us what happened there? Yeah, so Nate Chastain, the former OpenSea executive who was arrested last year on allegations of uh, basically buying up NFTs and flipping them, knowing that they would be uh, featured on OpenSea's homepage. Uh, so he was convicted of uh, you know a couple of charges tied to you know these insider trading allegations, and uh, yesterday he was sentenced to three months in jail, three months home confinement, three years of supervised release, a I believe it was a fifty thousand dollar fine, and he has to forfeit the NFTs that uh, he got you know during this uh, period. Um, so relatively speaking, I think it does not seem to be a very you know severe penalty for what he's been accused of. Uh, 
you know, he'll be home. Uh, he has to surrender, uh, surrender on November 2nd. He'll be home, you know, early in the new year. And that's a three month sentence, right, Nick? Right. Three months uh, in prison, followed by another three months of home confinement. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Nick, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. That was Coindesk Global Policy and Regulation Managing Editor Nick Day. Don't forget to sign up for the State of Crypto newsletter on Coindesk.com. Nick is the fabulous editor behind that.